Hello YouTube fans, Mother Rans here, and welcome to an update deck profile for Despots. This uh, deck profile will be a little different. It'll be showing first my TCG build. I'm currently running IRL, because now with Despots 6 in the TCG, I might as well start running it. But I'll also be showing uh, the version that I'll be using on, that I usually use on Salvation in my videos with Despots 7 and 8, and how it has adjusted and what I'm using differently from what I am in the TCG. So there'll be a link in the description to that one if you don't want to listen to the TCG version first. So yeah, uh, click that down link at uh, that link in the description below. So yeah, for those who want to see the TCG build, I'll go through that now. I'm running triple Despot Six, the Pendulum Scale. I don't like Despot Six to be honest, mainly because it switches monsters to to it changes the battle position better in the TCG. Then in the OCG form, since the OCG form has piercing, but in the TCG it's alright, but I don't prefer it. It didn't do, add anything further. Here's a little bit more OTK potential, but that's about it. It didn't do anything more further. Whereas Despot 5 is an MST. It's another triple because they're the only scales we have so far, but easily searched out. Despot 5 MST is my opponent, and then can be machine duped, so now another two MST monsters. So that's always a good option. But again, well, one more MST monster because you need one on scale. So yeah, or oh, depending if you have, if you're not going for the scale that time. Then we have triple four, the big beat stick. No longer towers out because there's no towers. Thank God. But um, it can be a sky base out if they actually try to do sky base turbo. You never know. But um, Despot four can run over anything to a certain extent, and can send you des million despots and also switch a summon them when it destroys a monster by battle. It gains 500 attack for each level of that monster you send to the graveyard, so sending a 6 will increase its attack by 35 free fast attack, so 3500 beats over Leo, but you don't, your opponent doesn't take any damage that turn, so they had to restrict it in some way, so that's Despot 4's flaw, you can't go for your DK that turn, where it sets up for the second turn. Then we have triple three, this makes the deck, it's the one that special summons out all the per perfect cards you need, and it's great, it gets, you out, it gets you access to two, which searches, so it's a bit like the Deneva the deck. And it also increases your despots by 500 for each despot card on the field, so setting up that scale even when you don't you not go pendulum summon, is still beneficial. Then triple two. When it is special summoned, add one despot card from my deck to my hand. All machines gain 500 attack and defense except this card, which means it's a machine duplication as soon as it's summoned on the field. It searches and it's not once per turn search. If you saw my episode where I was going against Raid Raptors and Storming Mirror Force, he Storming Mirror Force three despot twos back, and I spent them summoned all three of them back onto the field. Which meant I had six searches one turn. Unfortunately, the, con the actual um, quality of that video was really bad because of issues with the laptop. <laughs> but it's all fixed now. Next, on two maxis, instead of uh, upstarts at this point, and there is another replacement for upstart at this point, um, maxi is great in the current climate since we don't have monarchs in TCG effectively. So. Maxi can still be very much thriving, and plus with Clifford a lesser threat, Maxi is more active. Then we have two wands. I never play three, three clogs. He doesn't add anything more except he's the OTK of the deck. He gives five hundred for each machine type monster on the field. If you switch some two machines consecutively on the, on the field at the same time, so you can switch some of this monster from your graveyard. Which is very good and helps when you pendulum summon, but you can't use them when you're using Despot 4 because it doesn't activate you any damage there. So, yeah, it's also a tuner that gives you tr access to all your synchro plays. It's more of a synchro deck than an XC deck, but you don't need to use either because the OTK itself is so powerful. Then, one for one, special summon out uh, Despot 1 when you need it. Triple Transmodify. Modify, this is another replacement for Upstart in the, in the deck, because it can upgrade your 1 to a 2, your 2 to a 3, and then so on and so forth, except with Pendulum Monsters because they're not sent to the graveyard as a cost, and therefore Transmodify Modify can't resolve. 
because it needs that monster in the graveyard. That's why it's not used in my more OCG with the OCG support build. So yeah, it's all right in the TCG build for now. So Transmodify more or less will give you the access from one to two, and two will get you a search. Or you can go from two that's already got a search into another three, and give you unlimited OTK potential. Then one Regeki, simple. But two Dark Halls is something different. I usually use Mirror Force in my other build, but that's because my opponent's going to be very powerful. Dark Hall is just more get everything off the field. They're not going to go so fast on the field, and it's it's still a very powerful card. Allows you to OTK it a lot more easily. Same for Torrential Tribute in the deck. Then Triple Machine Duplication. This allows you to duplicate your Despot into a very powerful OTK standard, or duplicate your twos to get an extra two searches. Search out your scale and go off from there. It's great in the deck, but I don't like Inferno the Reckless Summon, which can do the same thing. It's just it summons your opponent's monsters, which is annoying. Yeah, opponent has to have monsters, so you can't do it turn one. So there's, there's, there's limitations there. That's why I prefer Machine Duplication, a more machine based card than the Inferno the Reckless Summon. Then two MSTs to clear some back row. Back row is always a problem. Limiter removal, removal, always use the machine decks, United We Stand, increase your monster by, depending if, depending on what you've summoned. If you know some Despot 3 and some that Despot 2, that's an extra 1600 attack on that Despot 3 most likely. Or if you have 3 of them out, number 2400, and it keeps going up and up and up. The OTK aspect of the deck is very high, it's not good to, it doesn't need that much defense. Then one torrential tribute, as I said, Vanity's Emptiness, still good in the format. Solemn Warning, perfect in this format, as it's now a lot of pendulum problems. And then triple powerful rebirth to rebar my little despot guys and bring out further plays. It also doesn't um, clog with transmodify because it's based on the level in the, of the monster in the graveyard. Even though this increases level, it only increases it whilst on the field. So that is always good. So yeah, I probably will be summoning that Despot 5, but I don't want it in the graveyard anyway, unless I'm summoning it through Despot 4. So yeah. And to the Exceeds and Synchros, we have one Gachi Gachi Genetsu. I had two options, Sky Sanchura or Genetsu. I go for Genetsu because it has more defense and it also increases your attack, so you can still go with OTKs in it. One Castell, because Castell is so good. Giga Gantex, which replaces Excite on in my, build, in my build for this, searching out other um, death spots, but I'm unlikely to go into it. One Misburg Colossus, because Colossus is quite a good defense, and Tatsunoko, if you wanted to go into Leo, as a great defense against Burning Abyss. Then we have Herald of Arc Light, because you can still go into this with uh, death spot 3 and 1. But it's not as commonly used anymore. It was used when it was when the stuff first came out, but not anymore. One Armides, as this can attack your opponent, it can attack your opponent and stop like Burning Abyss and Shadal problems. Mephis Horus to permanently negate a card in the field, most likely a floodgate. Black Rose Dragon, nuke the field, it's uh black it's that uh, excite on Frodo. And Moonlight Rose to prob show problems for all those reclaiming prestige Shadal and Necros decks. Then we have Clearing Synchro Dragon, Necros is still a problem, Trishula is still a problem, Synchro can protect against that. Scrap Dragon, it can destroy our scales, destroy the opponent's monster, and then the scales will get pluses. I'm not bringing Wavering Eyes in the deck because Wavering Eyes is not really needed. It's just, it's more of a side deck card for this deck. Then one Trishula, because Trishula is an, is at one and we might as well abuse him. One Despot Jets to nuke our board as well as nuke theirs, and it can also get out the searches with Despot 2. And Leo to go against um, Burning Abyss. I don't want Star Eater because it's not really it's that's a bit too many levels to be summoning out. So this is the TCG build I'm using currently. And now onto the OCG build. From testing, it does play quite nice and can be very annoying for your opponent to play against. So the OC, more OCG based build is running triple eight to double attack, and it also protects your monsters from being targeted by card effects. 
which is very powerful. I'm using a triple, although I'm thinking that I may... Well, I'm keeping this one a triple. I may cut this down to a double and then add another five back into the deck, just because I like the MST. And Despot 8 can double attack, so it's very powerful. Gains 500 attack for each Despot card in your graveyard. This kind of thing makes me think that there's going to be a small trap for the deck, because they keep saying card and not monster. It's reasonable on Despot 3, but not Despot 8. And then Despot 7 is the Piercer, has the same effect that you gain 500 attack for each Despot card in your graveyard, and your Despots can't be attacked in front for attacks except this one, so you can lock down your opponent with two Despot 7s or lock down your opponent with two Despot 8s, which is very nice. Then two Despot 6s, I hate, as I said, I didn't like Despot 6, that's why Despot 8 is more applicable. And that two Despot 5s, which I may be bumping back up to 3 and taking out one seven, just because Despot 5 is so good. Then 4s, 3s, 2s at the same quality, Maxi is still there, Despot still there, and all those stuff. Upstart Goblins replaces Transmodify because Transmodify is not applicable with Pendulums and therefore doesn't give you the plus you want. Then we place Triple Burying or Sandstorm Mirror Force because there's a lot of XC and Synchro based decks on Salvation at the moment and this protects against them as it will clog their board and mean that they can't go into their Synchros and Exceeds. Then two Mirror Force instead of Dark Hall just because I'm in a more defensive in a more defensive play while using this deck. Then the powerful rebirth, as I said. The only change from the extra deck is that I'm using Super Heavy Samurai Swords Master Mushu C, which is a synchro monster that can add a machine type from your graveyard, but you can't use it that turn since you'll have spells and traps in your graveyard. So yeah, that's that's both of the builds. That's what are very powerful, they can do a lot of OTKs, and I really enjoy both decks. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this deck profile, please leave a comment below if you guys suggest for the deck, or suggest for my channel in general, and please like, subscribe if you enjoyed this, and want to see further content. Matt Rant, signing out.